Taylor here. Today we're going to talk about pricing your art. What do you price it at? It's probably one of the biggest mysteries there are. Just a minute, folks. A little caffeine here. Ah, keeps me fueled. <laughs> one of the big mysteries. What do you price it at? I get questions from people all the time. Well, I'm just starting out. What do I price it at? Well, first of all, when you're first starting out, the best thing you can do is to do your homework. Go online, find an art site, and try to locate people that paint just like you, pretty close to what you do. And try to figure out their formula on what they sell. If you're selling on a site and you plan on selling on that site, you got to remember one thing. There's a cap. You can't get crazy. There's just so much money people are going to spend and that's it. Unfortunately nowadays uh, a 24 by 48 picture sells roughly online on these art sites for about 300 bucks. Yeah, maybe 350. You might get a little bit more but you're pushing it. That's about what the average sells for. Well, how do you figure out a formula? Well, here's what I do, and it doesn't necessarily apply to you because you're just starting out. But you could start there, and you don't ever want to sell your work too low because if you sell it too low, then you get a perceived value of not being worth much. You want to try to be in with everybody else and find that range. One thing I want to say is once you sell on your sites, don't ever, ever, ever run a sale. That's the biggest mistake you can do as an artist. A lot of people say, oh, I still have more paintings. But what you're doing is you're perceiving, you're giving a perceived image of yourself that your work is discounted and cheap. And that's the worst thing you can do on these sites is run sales. Live with it. I'll tell you something and I'm going to tell you the truth. When I first started selling on the sites, I didn't sell anything right away. And I got like anxious, you know. Well, I sold a few paintings, but I thought, okay, I'm gonna increase it, and they run a sale. Well, I ran a sale, and I didn't get any sales, nothing. And I ran it for like three, four weeks, nothing. So I said, that's it, I took the sale off. All of a sudden I sold like three or four paintings. Four, five, then it went four and five, and I started selling like crazy. So a holiday came up, and I said, okay, let's have a holiday sale. Put stuff on sale. Poof, dead. Nothing. Didn't sell anything. Took the sale off. Boom. Sold a ton. So what happens is that if you sell yourself too short, people are going to think, well, it's not worth anything. So I never run sales. The worst thing you can do is run a sale. You're just, you're making your art look cheap. Okay. What do we price art at? Now, like I said, you have to do your homework, but here's a formula that I use that I found effective for me. I charge by the foot, or roughly by the half foot. Every six inches, it's $25, which is cheap. So in other words, if this was one foot by two feet, that's three feet, that would be $150 for this. It's a three quarter inch, $150 and that's a fair price for my art. Now technically if you were to go in a gallery a piece like this might be eight or nine hundred dollars. Well why is it so expensive in a gallery? Well galleries charge 50 to 60 percent to an artist. So that's why things have to be so high so the artist can make some money and the gallery can make money too because that's how they make their how they turn on their lights. So they want big money. So be prepared if you ever go in a gallery. That's what's going to happen. But that's one of the formulas I use. Now, if it's a custom piece, I'll charge considerable more depending on the job. But that's usually the base that I go with. If the canvas is a little bit thicker, like one and a half inch thicker, that goes into play too. That would be my base, and then I might add on $20 or $50 depending on the uh, the size of the canvas and the thickness. And that's just a general rule. It might not even work for you. My suggestion is to do your homework and find someone like you and see what their prices are. 
But there's also another little trick. If you find an artist like you, look at their sales. Are they selling? If they're not selling, it doesn't matter what their prices are. It's not going to make a difference. So the trick is to find an artist that's similar to you with good sales. So you know that that's a good range for your type of art. Another uh, interesting thing I want to say is that I knew this woman. For a painting about this size, she would have on it like $1,800. And I looked at it and I says, wow, that's a lot. You know, and it wasn't even in a gallery. And literally, I mean, honestly, she painted 10,000 paintings. No exaggeration. Her home was jammed full. She's got other space that's jammed full. She's literally got 10,000 paintings. So I asked her, I says, well, how many paintings do you sell, you know, a year? She says, I'm lucky to sell one a year. I said, one a year? She says, yeah. She says, because of my prices are so high. I said, well, why don't you lower your prices? She says, what? And have everybody think that I'm cheap? I'm a cheap artist? No way. So that doesn't make sense to me. You're either a selling artist or you're a collecting artist. And that's what you have to determine. Do you want to sell it or do you want to collect it and hold on to it? For her one painting, I sold 80 paintings and made 10 times more than her, 20 times more than her in the long run. Let me tell you a little quick story and you'll understand the point. Back in 1980, I retired. I retired at 25. So I had plenty of time on my hands to do whatever I wanted to do. And art wasn't one of them. I was burned out and that's another story altogether. I didn't do art. but. I decided, well, you know what, I got these weekends to waste. Why don't I go sell at the flea market? I'll have some fun, you know. So I knew this guy that was into tools. So I went over to his importing place, and I says, you know what, I want to sell. I says, give me, give me tools and set me up. He said, well, do you know anything about tools? I said, nothing. I don't know anything. I don't even use them, you know. If I have something to do, usually I'd just pay somebody to do it. But I said, I think I can sell money, you know, make some money and have some fun. You know, enough money to take my wife out to dinner. You know. So anyways, he said, okay. So he took me down the line. He says, here, you need this. And I said, well, how much do I charge for it? He says, well, this hammer cost, a 16-ounce hammer back then with a fiberglass handle was twenty. He says, yeah, I charge two bucks. I said, two dollars? I said, that's not a lot of money. He says... Do what I said. He said, I have experience and I'm going to tell you what to charge for it. You're going to make some money. I said, well, okay. Then he went down another item and real cheap. I said, why, is, why are you selling so cheap a hammer for two bucks and stuff? He says, let me tell you a little secret in business. Don't fall in love with the product. I said, what? Don't fall in love with the product. Move it. If you want to move it, move it. Don't fall in love with it. And those words stuck in my mind. Well, to make a short story long, I went to the markets. And within a month, well, maybe six weeks, I lied. Six weeks. I had 70 feet of table. And I'm going down that line. And I'm raking in the money as fast as I could. I had to have my dad help me. He got one end. I'm getting the other. And we're just rolling down. I'm making money hand over fist. I mean, it was just rolling and it was insane. I made a killing and I didn't mean to do that. I just wanted to have a leisurely Sunday, maybe sell a thing here and there and have fun. And it turned out to be a, a business and I'm just rolling and it was, in, it was incredible. But, which made me realize, and those words stuck true, don't fall in love with the product. If you're gonna sell it, sell it. Okay, you're at a show and you got $200 on this and somebody offers you $175. Are you going to take it? You're darn straight you're going to take it. But usually as a rule, most people aren't going to argue when you set a price. They're not going to usually argue. They'll pay you usually what you want. But sometimes some people will. And it's better to take the $25 less and move it. Because you can always paint again. You're an artist. You're going to be creating. I have, sometimes people will say, oh, I love this so much, I can't sell it. 
Then the next one they paint, oh, I love it so much, I can't sell it. Those people are collecting artists. They're not serious. Another thing, too, is don't quit your day job. Okay, you decide, oh, my God, I'm anointed. I'm going to be an artist. Well, I'm going to tell you some a bit of news. You go into a room of 100 people, and 95 of them are artists. They all think the same way you do. Everybody, or they know somebody. So you don't ever want to quit your day job. Start making money at it first. Then, when you feel the time is right, then you take that leap of faith. But you can't just like quit your job and think you're going to make a killing. There's a reason why there's the term starving artists. And it's true. So you want to really be prepared to understand that sales aren't going to happen right away. They're going to happen. They will happen. And you got to keep promoting and and another thing I just want to say is you got to understand one thing. As an artist, it is 20% art and 80% branding. What does that mean? As an artist, unfortunately today, you have to brand yourself. You have to be somebody. Your bio is everything and who you are, you know, because it's, it is a very crowded field. So you have to develop a brand. Now, how do you do this? Going to art shows. You know, you go to different art shows. you got to mingle with arts, join galleries, try, join, get memberships and uh, different things. Spread yourself around. Get your name known. You know, and then you'll get the money for your art. They're not going to buy from somebody they don't know. It's tougher to sell. But you will sell. But use that opportunity to brand yourself. That's so important. You have to be a brand. So... With those words, and what do you do for commissions? Well, if somebody comes up and says, oh, would you paint me this picture? Yes, you will. You charge considerably more for a commission. You might use the base formula and add X amount of money to it, you know, to cover your time. Your time is important. You don't work for free. Sometimes, especially when you're first starting out, paint to enjoy it and try to sell it, but don't make that your priority at first. You don't want to interfere with your art. You want to be able to focus and be able to create and paint. You know, and sales will happen. You can list them online. And by doing art forums and entering art shows, that's the most valuable, valuable piece of information you can achieve. Because what happens is that when you go to an art show, People will look at your art, you sneak up behind them and listen to what they're saying. They're going to tell you what they like and what they don't like. And you're going to learn exactly what is liked and what isn't. You know, you, you hear some amazing comments at these shows, and it's invaluable information. So, basically, you have to do your homework. And nothing happens overnight. You're not going to wake up and be a millionaire selling your art, and you're not going to be discovered. It's not like back in the 60s when uh, Peter Max, the, you look him up, Peter Max, he, uh, at the time, the Beatles' Yellow Submarine came out, back around 67, and the way they drew the cartoons. Well, he had some art experience, but he drew kind of like that in that 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 kind of style. And he drew love, you know, and the hearts and all that. And he had posters printed up and he became a, a, like a big sensation. He started selling like crazy and that was the beginning of his career. You know, it doesn't happen today, folks. It's very, very difficult to have that kind of success today, you know, just by doing something like that. Today we live in a very visual world. We have computers. Color TV was a big thing back then. I mean, it was just in its infancy. So art was a completely different thing. People looked more at art. Today it's tough. You have to be original. You have to be creative. And you have to create a brand. And that's the most important thing you can do. Get involved. Because that's going to make a difference in how you price your art. But find your base formula and 
see what people like. And once you start selling paintings, you'll be able to see what people like. And do your homework. That's all you can do. That's the secret, is don't be afraid. Today we live in a, a computer age. You've got Google, you've got YouTube. I mean, knowledge is at hand for everybody. You want to know anything, you just go online and you can find out anything you want to find. You found me, right? So do your homework. And the most important thing, if nothing else, paint because you love it. If you sell it, take the attitude that if you sell it, that's great. That doesn't mean you shouldn't try to sell it. You should. But if you don't sell it, don't be disappointed. Keep going because you will find your niche. It's very, you have to have a lot of determination and say, yes, I'm going to be a great artist. I'm going to sell a lot of paintings, but I'm not going to be stupid and quit my job and not be able to eat. When the right time comes and you can make that transformation to full time, You'll know it. You'll know it. Well, hope you learned something, and thank you very much for listening. And these are just my opinions, and I hope that hopefully it shed a little bit of light on a, a subject about pricing. But uh, there's just many ways you can do it, and you could always figure out your hours and the cost of the work. You know, you can do it that way. You know, it's just... It's common sense, but, and don't sell yourself short. Well, thank you very much for watching, folks. And stay tuned because there's plenty more videos coming. Thank you and bless you.